Hi, my name is Gary Huckleberry. I'm a earth scientist uh, by training, but much of my work concerns archaeology. As you probably know, archaeology is a study of past cultures through the analysis of physical and chemical evidence. That evidence often lies beneath the surface. That means that ancient artifacts, habitation structures, and other cultural remains are usually contained within a matrix of sediments. In some cases, the sediments themselves are the evidence of past human activity. Thus, it is important to know something about the dirt in which human history is recorded. Geoarchaeology is the application of earth science methods and perspectives to better understand the archaeological record. We're the dirt people, but we do a lot more. Geoarchaeology is a discipline that works at multiple spatial scales from microstratigraphy to landscapes. It is an interdisciplinary science whose practitioners may be formally trained as geologists, archaeologists, geographers, or soil scientists. There are international geoarchaeological organizations, academic programs, and even a professional journal dedicated to the discipline. Like many scientific disciplines, there are many specialties within geoarchaeology. Current geoarchaeological investigations in the North American Southwest address a variety of topics of interest to both the academic, archaeological, and cultural resource management communities. Although not a complete list, these are some recurrent geoarchaeological topics in the Southwest. In this short video, I will focus on one of these, and that's uh, how geoarchaeology contributes to our understanding of past environmental changes and landscapes. As the Greek philosopher Heraclitus once said, the only thing permanent is change. And the Southwest has seen significant environmental and landscape changes since humans first entered the region at the end of the last ice age. Through the medium of culture, humans adapt and respond to environmental change in complex ways. Soils, deposits, and landforms associated with archeological sites provide insights into some of these changes and allow us an opportunity to evaluate how human behavior and environment interact. The earliest unequivocal evidence of people in the Southwest date, dates to about 13,000 years ago. These first people, whom we refer to as Paleo-Indians, witnessed significant climatic and biogeographic changes as the glacial Pleistocene transitioned into the interglacial Holocene. This climatic transition was not uniform, and a brief return to cold conditions occurred about 12,000 years ago, a period we call the Younger Dryas. This event is best defined in the North Atlantic region in peat bogs and ice cores. How it was expressed in the Southwest is a topic of interest to both climate scientists and archaeologists. Environmental changes at the end of the Pleistocene are recorded in a variety of proxy records ranging from pack rat middens to cave formations. Evidence of environmental change is also reco recorded in sediments at archaeological sites in the southwest like Murray Springs in Arizona and Blackwater Draw in New Mexico. A stratigraphic marker commonly associated with the Younger Dryas is a dark organic soil commonly referred to as a black mat, reflecting former shallow water tables and marsh-like conditions. The general consensus is that the Younger Dryas was a period of increased winter precipitation and or cooler conditions in the southwest that coincided with the extinction of megafauna and a shift in hunting strategies towards bison and smaller game. This is reflected in changes in Paleo-Indian projectile point styles and, shift, and a shift away from robust blade technology. After the Younger Dryas, climate became warmer and or drier as we entered the early Holocene. This is reflected in an expansion of drought tolerant vegetation, reduced spring activity, and the drying of large lakes. People aggregated in proximity to shrinking wetland resources as water tables dropped and lakes receded. Artifact assemblages from this time suggest a shift away from bison towards smaller game and plant gathering. This marks the beginning of an extended cultural period we refer to as the archaic. So there is still much we don't know about the Pleistocene-Holocene transition. At a minimum, we can say that it marks a period of dramatic environmental and cultural change where many large animal species went extinct, temperatures increased, and plant communities shifted across the landscape. Needless to say, many have used this transition as an analog for modern ecological changes associated with global warming. 
However, the North American Southwest is a large and diverse area, and questions remain as to how environments changed in different locations, such as the upland plateaus to the north and the lower deserts of the south. We might not expect that all places change the same way during this time, thus allowing for a great diversity of human adaptation strategies. Coastal areas also experienced significant environmental changes at the end of the Ice Age as sea levels rose in response to melting glaciers and warming oceans. In the northern Gulf of California, the rate of sea level rise during the Pleistocene-Holocene transition was about one centimeters per year. Given the flat bathymetry of the northern Gulf, the sea would have advanced inland at a rate of one to two meters per year. Well, global sea level rise didn't stabilize until approximately 6,000 years ago. Not surprisingly, the earliest archeological evidence along the modern Northern Gulf Coast is approximately 6,000 years old as confirmed through radiocarbon dating. Despite the hyperaridity of this area, people came to the coast to harvest fish, crabs, and shellfish in protected lagoons and estuaries. Diverse pottery styles found at these sites indicate that people may have come from hundreds of miles away for this rich protein resource. Or alternatively, it is possible that a local group, the ancestors of the Aced Odam, produced the middens and traded shell and other marine resources for pottery with other groups. Geoarchaeologists have used the shell midden sites to help date coastal landforms, including barrier islands and large migrating sand dunes. This work demonstrates that barrier protected estuaries and lagoons formed rapidly after mid Holocene sea level stabilization and provided a rich and accessible food source. Such information provides additional insight into human adaptation in the context of environmental change and has relevance to understanding the ecological resilience or vulnerability of modern coastal environments in the face of global warming and sea level rise. Subsequent climatic changes during the middle and late Holocene were of smaller magnitude. However, even the effects of small climate change can be significant on the landscape with respect to floods and droughts. Such events can have significant impacts on human subsistence, especially after the introduction of agriculture to the Southwest about 4,000 years ago. Given the arid to semi-arid climate across much of the Southwest, most agricultural crops relied on some form of irrigation and thus were commonly planted in floodplains. Floodplains are dynamic components of the landscape. Geoarchaeologists have identified past alluvial cycles where streams downcut creating arroyos that lowered water tables, dried up marshes, and negatively impacted the ability of farmers to irrigate their crops. These arroyos would eventually fill with sediment, sometimes rapidly, burying trees later exhumed by subsequent arroyos as the cycle repeats. Through the analysis of alluvial stratigraphy, geoarchaeologists date flood deposits and have confirmed past changes in the frequency and magnitude of floods. Such changes in flood regime likely drove past arroyal cutting cycles and thus influenced farming and settlement patterns along rivers with fine grained floodplains prone to channel incision. Larger rivers with sand and gravel floodplains like those of the Salt and Gila rivers in Arizona respond to changes in flood regime through other channel dynamics such as shifts between narrow single channel to wide multi-channel braided floodplains. Historically, these floodplain changes were highly disruptive to Native American and Euro-American farming as shown here on this photo of Akima Odom repairing a damaged canal intake on the Gila River. Geoarchaeological investigations incorporating canal and floodplain stratigraphy and tree ring reconstructions of past stream flow indicate that channel dynamics related to flooding often coincided with important settlement changes in the lower deserts. Such environmental changes may have played a role in the decline of the Hohokam during the 14th and 15th century CE. Interestingly, a concern with current global warming is how it will influence the hydrological cycle. Several models predict an increase in both drought and floods in the Southwest, that is, increased climatic variability. Studies of past floods and floodplain dynamics provide possible analogs for future hydrological and geomorphic changes. These are just a few examples of Southwest geoarchaeology that emphasize the study of past environmental changes in landscape dynamics. 
Some of these changes were part of a large global scale climatic event like the Younger Dryas that dramatically impacted biogeography and superficial geology. Others were associated with smaller magnitude climate events such as floods and droughts that resulted in more local and short lived environmental disruptions. How these changes impacted past cultures depended on not only on the frequency and magnitude of the events, but on the ability of native peoples to respond to these disruptions through subsistence diversification, technology, mobility, and trade, among others. There are many other types of geoarchaeology currently being conducted by men and women in the Southwest who help archaeologists study and preserve the region's rich cultural heritage. Whether working with microscopic thin sections of pottery, cultural stratigraphy, or landscapes, geoarchaeology continues to be a useful approach to help tease out the many hidden secrets of human history. This work not only informs us of the past, but also provides a deep time perspective to current environmental challenges. <laughs>